Let's take out some tiles. They are not Ziploc, sorry. Um, yeah, I, these are the only ones I have down here. I don't have any Ziploc. So, if we do this, if we work with these tiles, if we work with the algebra tiles, which algebra tile do we use as a number one? The small ones, little bitty ones. Little bitty squares, yeah. Okay. I think I can get them. I've never used this softball before. I'm going to give it a try. It's going to appear over this one. So let's talk algebra tiles. Okay. So we're saying that that's going to be a 1. Is that right? Um, yes. Okay, so if that's a 1, what is this one going to be? Because the length of it isn't necessarily five, it's not four. The idea behind this is that the length can be anything. So in this case here, there it comes up to four. When they actually make these things, they make them in such a fashion. Whoa! This all, well, I guess it's off by just a little bit. Just to be nice if it was a little bit further off of five. But nonetheless, it's supposed to be x. It's supposed to be a variable. So this 4 times 3 plus x, let's represent that on algebra tiles here. So if I took 4 multiplied by the x and the 3, what we need to do with this, if we're going to use what is called the area model of multiplication, we want to multiply length times width. So we would think of the 4 as a length, and then the x plus 3 would be another side of a rectangle, or the width of it. So, you guys have four ones that you could use as one side? Set it up like so. Here's one side. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle. And then come up with the area of that rectangle. So model this one with me if you would. along this top edge. If one side, if this is the 4, 
What can we put across the top edge? X. So bring an X up there. And how much more? Three. Yeah. So I put three ones up here. Now I don't know if we're going to have enough tiles to fill this whole thing in, but I bet you we can. So this is going to be the other edge. And what, what we're trying to do is figure out if we multiply this length times this width this side of 4 times the x plus 3 side is x plus 3. What's the area going to be? What fills in? So take some of your algebra tiles and fill this in. What would go, what would end up being this little section of the rectangle? In other words, if I took this one and multiplied it by that, what would have to get filled in here? What did you say? So you have to have four X's. So here would be an X. Here's another one. There's a fourth. So there's four X's. So the 4 multiplied by the x portion is 4x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to come over here on the paper and I'm going to write 4 times x plus 3 again. So that 4 multiplied by x, the 4 multiplied by the x is the first term times the first term inside of the parentheses. So what's going to go out in this section? to fill in. Three. Yeah, three here, three there. How many total? Nine. No, twelve. Twelve. I don't know if we have enough squares, but if you were going to fill all of these in, we'd need to have twelve of them. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Looks like there are enough. And if you want to fill them in, you're welcome to. We'll take a look at this up here as well. If you're at home watching and you want algebra tiles, shoot me an email. I'll figure out a way to get them to you. So here we are. So if we separate the sides, the 4 and the 8, if we separate that, I'm sorry, the 4 and the x plus 3, if we separate those, the rectangle is the product. That's the result of the multiplication. And the 4 and the x plus 3 are the two factors. So in this case here, we're showing that the 4 times the x gives us the 4x, and then the 4 times the 3 gives us the 12. So when we write that out on paper, we have 4 times the x plus the 4 times the 3, which is 12. So now the question is, can we add the 4x's and the 12? So can we take 4x and add it to 12? Yes or no? Yes. So you're saying we could add these no. to these and say that we had something? We'd have, uh, no. We can't, no, this is it. Those X's are X's. We can't add those to the ones and call them something new and different. They are not like terms. So here are the 4X plus the 12. That's the result. That's all we have in terms of the multiplication. So now let's come back over to this other problem over here, the one that's on the board. Uh, so I've got 4 multiplied by A plus 2B plus C. So there's three terms in the parentheses, but the idea is that the 4 has to be multiplied by each and every one of these. 
So if you wanted to draw a picture of it, you might think of it like this. One side is 4, and then the other side is A and 2B and a C like this. Now we don't know how big A or 2B and C are, but we do know that we have to multiply the 4 by each of these pieces so we can add it together. So what's 4 times A? 4A. 4A. And then 4 times 2B is going to be 4 times 2 is 6 times? Oh, uh, A, B. A, huh? Wait. 4 six multiplied yes, by 2. A. Sorry, 6A. I'm just confusing myself. Okay, so if this much is 2B, we have how many of them? Four. Four. So if this is 2B, 2B, and that's 2B, and that's 2B, how much is all of this? Eight. Eight. Thank you. And then 4 multiplied by C is is 4C. So if we look back at the problem here, we look at taking the 4 and multiplying it by each of the three terms. So this becomes 4a plus 4 times 2 times b plus 4 times c. So can a's, b's, and c's be added together? Yes. No. No, because they are not like terms. We don't know what a equals. We don't know what b or c equal. So we're left with that. That's as far as this goes. That's as far as that works. So the distributive property, formally, so it can be written as the distributive property of multiplication over addition. It can also be written as the distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. It works like this. This is the general rule. If we have some value, and that value is C, that value multiplied by two different numbers that are being added together has to be the C multiplied by the A and the C multiplied by the B. So this factor that's on the outside of the parentheses needs to be distributed, needs to be spread out over what is in the parentheses. So this would be the distributive property of multiplication over addition. And the same thing is going to hold true if we do subtraction. In this case here, that number needs to be multiplied by both of those terms, but the second one is going to end up being subtracted or taken away. So it's going to be CA minus CB. I think for the work that we do, it's important to look at this and understand that when we subtract a value, that that is the same as adding a negative. And in this, all of this work that we're doing in chapter two, we use a lot of distributive property problems. I think it is best for you to look at A minus B as A plus negative. a negative B. And we talked about that over the last couple of years. But when things start getting complicated and you have lots of terms inside of the parentheses that you're distributing with, and, and when we're using more and more variables, it's important to not lose these subtraction symbols. And the easiest way to do that is when you're given a problem, immediately change it to the addition of a negative. It will save a lot of grief. So this then would be written as CA plus a negative C times B. Because C times a negative B is the same as negative C times B. Positive times a negative always ends negative, regardless of the order. Okay, so you guys walk me through something here. The second example, it says to expand. When they use the word expand, what they're meaning is to remove parentheses, spread out the expression expand it. So 
So for the second example here, they give negative 11 times 5 minus 6w. Negative 11 times 5 minus 6w. We want you to expand it. So remove the parentheses. So what's a good first step? What did I say here with subtraction? If you have subtraction of something in the distributive properties, we to a negative. change it to the addition of a negative. So if I rewrite this as plus a negative 6w, that's a good first step. So follow the pattern. What shall we write now? First times the first, first times the second. Same thing here. Times that, times that. That gives us our two products. So, what do we multiply together first? Eleven and five, but the eleven's negative. So I'm going to write that here for you. As you become more comfortable with it, you, you can just go straight to writing what you negative 55. Negative 55 is, you bet. So the next step is to take negative 11 times negative 6w. And we're going to, the nice thing here is we're always going to add whatever the product of those two is. So a negative times a negative is always positive. positive. I'll still write it. Okay. Now you said that was negative 55. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so 11 times 6 is uh, six, 66. 66 times W. So there. That's fine, written that way. If you wish to write it with the variable first, that's called standard form when we do that, and that's fine. You can also write this as 66w, and instead of addition of a negative, just subtract 55. Any one of these three is acceptable. Okay, let's do the next one. 2x times the quantity, 5x minus 3. Put it up here. Okay, so let's set this one up with algebra tops. Walk this over to the board. Let's do this one on algebra tiles and see what it's going to look like. X minus 3. Well, I'm just going to change it to X plus a negative 3 right off the bat. So we need to have a side which is going to be 2x as long, and another side which is going to be x minus 3 long. So grab your tiles. How are we going to show that something is 2x is in length? Yes. So they got a green and a red side. Um, I believe that red is going to be positive. The green would be a negative x. So there's one x. Here's a second x. So this would be two x's in length. So now we have to go across. How long are we going to go across the other direction? 
1x plus three negatives, yeah. So rather than subtracting from the x, here's what we do. We put our x up here, and then we'll just flip over. So the off-colored side are going to be our negatives. So here's an, here's an x, here's a negative three. And now the idea is we want to we want to fill in everything, fill in that area with the appropriate shapes and count it all up. And then we'll know what the entire area is or what the product of 2x and x minus 3 are. So let's start here. What shape is going to fill in between these two pieces? Square. So it's positive. So that shape is an x squared. So x multiplied by x is going to be x to the second power, or a, a square, which is measuring x on each side. And that happens twice. And x would be yeah. and then x times 1, times 1 again, times 1 again, or simply x times negative 3. But now we're going to have to flip these over to make them look negative. Here we are. And then three more down below. And I'm um, short. You guys probably are too. Being brand new packages. So this will be one more down here. So if we look at this, the total of x squared is 2. And the total of negative x's is 6. So that's with algebra tiles. Now if I set this up, using the distributive property, we have 2x multiplied by x, which is written like this, 2x times x, or 2 times x to the second power. And then we have 2x's times a negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So there's negative 6. And then we have x. So 2x squared plus negative 6x. You could also write this 2x squared minus 6x. Either of those are acceptable. So here, now we have one more. Using the distributive property to write this fraction as the sum of two fractions. So this one is a little bit different. Get some board space here. Okay, so what they give us for an example here is 36 plus 3x over 18. Or we might say all over 18. So a couple of things with fractions that is going to be helpful to remember is that if we had, uh, oh gosh, let's, let's see here. Let's say we had something like uh, 2 fifths plus four fifths. If you were going to add those two fractions together, how do you go about doing it? You add two and four and leave five to five. Yeah, you add two and four, and you leave five as your denominator, so you have six fifths, which is one and a fifth. Yeah, so the point behind this here is that we're adding the numerators and we have a common denominator. So in this case here, 36 plus 3x over 18 
Yeah, that's like having two terms, 36 and 3x, and their common denominator is 18. So this can be rewritten as 36 over 18 and 3x over 18. So why do this? Because now we can simplify. So 36 over 18 becomes... Uh. One and two. And then three and eighteen have a common factor of three, so this becomes one and eighteen divided by three is six. So we can rewrite this fraction as two plus one x or simply x over six. That's simplified. And sometimes we end up with an answer like that, but if we need to simplify it. we can use this to get to that point. So that's how we get started with distributive property. The distributive property is like underwear. It goes everywhere with us in math, except swimming. Although you can still swim in your underwear. This is like a vital tool. We're going to spend a lot of time on this chapter working with it. And we're going to look at different ways to model it. One way to model it is like in the second problem. This is an important one to take a look at. That's essentially an algebra tile model where they take, what is it, K they use for a variable? They say one side is K, the other side is a 3K. They box it off. And a 16, they box it off like that. Well, basically what this is saying here is very similar to our algebra tile model. It's saying that this K is a length, and it gets multiplied by that length, so it has to be 3K multiplied by K. This here ends up being K multiplied by 16 or 16 multiplied by k. I always write the coefficients in front of the variables. I'll write the integer value that's being multiplied by the variable in front of the variable. So this is one way to model this. You know, we can say that it's k times 3k plus 16, much like we did with the algebra tiles. And this, this problem here on, on the board this was 2x multiplied by x plus a negative 3. And we then saw that it was 2x squared, so that's the area, plus a negative 6x. And the factors, the multiplying terms, are the 2x and the x minus 3 lengths. So they ask for that. You know, they ask, show us the area of the largest rectangle. Well, that's this. That's the area. That's the result of the multiplication. So, let me go with that. Work on your homework.